With the election looming, the Taliban has increased its number of attacks from 32 a day to 48. When that suicide bomber in Kabul crashed his car into a NATO convoy, the Taliban was quick to claim credit for the mayhem. But a senior NATO officer insists 48 attacks cannot shut down 6,500 polling places. They do not have the capacity to intimidate and prevent 15 million Afghans voters that have registered for these elections. But Mandy Clark, who is covering the election for CBS News in Kabul, says the Taliban can hold down voter turnout. What you have to remember about Afghanistan is that it is a vast country with the majority of the population living in remote rural areas. So even if the Taliban just block off one road, it can stop an entire village from reaching the polling station. And that could have a significant impact on election day. Clark says reduced turnout would probably hurt incumbent President Hamid Karzai the most in what has turned out to be a spirited campaign complete with debates. Karzai is still expected to get the most votes, although he may need a runoff to defeat Abdullah Abdullah, a doctor who once served as the country's foreign minister. The United States, I, I think, accepts the fact that, that President Karzai is likely to win, but it would like to see a very different President Karzai over the next four years than they've had for the last few years. According to John Nagel of the Center for New American Security, the fact this has turned into a real horse race could serve as a wake-up call to Karzai. This is a, a good forcing function to put more coercive pressure on President Karzai, on his government, to, to root out some corruption and be more responsive to his people. That's what the U.S. wants out of this election, a better Afghan government. David Martin, CBS News, the Pentagon.